Alright, Karina Baby from A Year Full of Stories. Today is the 15th of June. And it's The Selfish Dog. There was once a dog called Fletcher who lived on a farm. He had plenty to eat every day and spent most of his time snoozing. One afternoon, he's eaten a good lunch. Fletcher ambled across the farmyard and wandered into the stable where the horses lived. But they were both out working in the fields. Fletcher looked around for a comfortable bed. There was a pile of hay that looked soft and warm. Just the place, thought Fletcher. So he lay down in the hay and fell asleep. At last the horses came home, tired and hungry after a hard day's work. As they hurried into the stable, Fletcher woke up. Go away, he snarled. Fletcher bored his teeth and growled fiercely. You would have thought he was guarding a load of meaty bones. That's our hay, said the horses, but they were too frightened to go near. Just then, Belinda, the farmer's cat, walked in. She lived in the stable, and the horses were her friends. Belinda sprung at Fletcher. Be off, she said with a hiss. The horses are hungry for their supper. Well, Fletcher took one look at Belinda's sharp claws and left. But as he trotted out the stable, he remarked, What a fuss about some dry and old hay. I want to eat that stuff even if I were starving. Selfish dog, said Belinda, snarling. Yes, said the horses, munching happily. Fletcher didn't want the hay himself, and he didn't want us to have it either. Oh my. So Fletcher... Not only did he not want the hay, but he didn't want to share with anyone else either. That's a sad, sad little puppy, huh? His feelings were hurt, and he was just being selfish. Karina Vivi, your mama loves you. So incredibly much. Let's do a storybook from this one. Mama's going to go down and get her car worked on tomorrow. So, I'm going to bring my computer with me and stuff. So this way we don't miss a night of stories. But right now Mama's on the farm and Mama helps with the cows and helps milk the cows in the morning and helps with the hens, right? And I get to make, I'm going to be making more eggs for the hen houses. So this way they don't think that their nests are just completely raided because they work. So, yeah, that's what Mama's been up to. Mama's been just missing you, baby. Just missing you. Aesop's Fables, The Loneliness. A great riverly existed among the breasts, oh, the beasts of the forest over which could produce the largest little... Some shame, shamelessly admitted having only two, while others boasted proudly of having a dozen. At least the committee called upon the loneliness. And to have many cubs, do you give birth? They asked the proud lioness. One said she replied sternly, but that one is a lion. Let's read this one again. Oh, okay. Aesop's Fables. The Lioness, not the Loneliness. The Lioness. A great rivalry existed, a great rivalry existed among the beasts of the forest over which could produce the largest litter. Some shamefacedly admitted having only two. Well, others boasted proudly of having a dozen. So they're posting about having 12 babies, right? And some are like, oh, we only had two babies. At last, the committee called upon the lioness. 
And to how many cubs do you give birth? They asked the proud lioness. Oh, she replied sternly. One, but that one is a lion. Application, quality is more important than quantity. All right, the next one is the wolf and the goat. A wolf saw a goat bestowing near a edge of a high cliff. My dear friend, he cried in his most sympathetic voice, aren't you afraid you will get dizzy and fall and hurt yourself? But the goat went on feeding the wolf, tried again. Isn't it terribly windy up here so high with no shelter at all? But the goat went on plucking grass. Besides, shouted the wolf, I am sure that you will find the grass far sweeter and more abundant down here. Then the goat replied, Are you quite sure, friend wolf, that this is my dinner? You are so... that you are so suspicious about and not your own application beware of a friend with an un, with an ulterior motive see because the wolf was trying to get the goat to come down so the wolf could eat the goat and the goat doesn't want to be eaten so he's like you sure it's my dinner that you're worried about because he's eating grass he's not worried about anything he's perfect and the, the, the wolf wants to eat him. And that happens a lot in life. You gotta be careful, baby. Really does. Like, sometimes you trust someone with everything that you got, and they wind up taking everything that you got away from you. That stuff happens, but when that happens, you don't get bitter about it. You just stay consistent with who you are. If someone changes who you are in paper, that's okay. That happens. But stay who you are. Don't let someone else knock you down to the point where you're not who you are anymore. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt others. And try not to let other people hurt you. But when they hurt you, you got to realize when someone else hurts you, it's because they're hurt inside themselves. Their, their entire lives are just shattered inside of their own heads. They don't mean to hurt other people. It's just sometimes people do. And then it's just what you learn from it. Sometimes the worst situations in the world are going to beat your heart down to the point where you just love on everyone else so much more. Don't give up who you are. I know you're a lot like me, Karina. I know you are. You love and you love and you love and I know you do because I know you. I love you, baby. All right, the cat and the mice. A cat grew a crack poop. A, a cat grown feeble with age and no longer able to hunt for mice. And so she was for mice and so she was what to do sat in the sun and bethought herself how she might entice them within the reach of her paws the idea came to her that if she would suspend herself by the hind legs from a peg in the closet wall the mice believing her to be dead no longer would be afraid of her. So the great pains and with the assistance of a torn pillowcase, she was able to carry out her plan. But before the mice could approach within range of the innocent looking paws, the wise old grapher mouse whispered to his friends, keep your distance, my friends. May a bag have I seen in my day, but never one with a cat's head at the bottom of it. They turned, then turning to the uncomfortable feline, he said, Hang there, good madam, as long as you please, but I will not trust myself within reach of you, though you were stuffed with straw. Application, he who is once divided is doubly suspicious. Oh, 
application, he who is once deceived is doubly suspicious. That's very true. Look at that kitty cat. See the kitty cat hanging from the bag? Isn't that crazy? The wolf and the crane. The wolf is gargling himself upon the poor animal he had killed. He gave a small bone stuck in his throat. The pain was terrible, and he ran up and down, beseeching every animal he met to relieve him. None of the animals, however, felt very sorry for the wolf, for, as one of them put it, that bone, which is stuck in the wolf's throat, might just as well be one of mine. Finally, the suffering wolf met a crane. I'll give you anything, he whined. If you will help take this bone out of my throat. The crane moved by his entries and and promises of reward. Ventured her long neck down the wolf's throat and drew out the bone. She then modestly asked for the promised reward. Reward, barked the wolf, showing his teeth as all the ungrateful creatures. I have permitted you to live and tell your grandchildren that you put your head in a wolf's mouth without having it bitten off. And then you ask for a reward? Get out of here before I change my mind. Those wolves. Some people really are wolves too, baby. They say one thing and then they do another. That wolf promised to give the crane a reward for taking this bone out of his throat. And now, the wolf is saying the reward is that the crane is just alive. Application. Those who live on expectation are sure to be disappointed. If you have an expectation of anyone or anything, you will be disappointed. People get upset. Papa never understood why I was always consistently okay no matter what he did to me, right? And it was because I never expected anything from your papa or anyone ever. You can't have expectations of other people because you're imposing your own ideas and beliefs onto someone else and you can't do that. So if you have an expectation, right, the way you feel is going to be here and expectation is going to be here. And if that expectation is not me, it's going to make you feel bad, right? You're going to go beneath the bell curve. Let's draw this out. So, I don't have a pen. So, this is your life, right? You have a line here where you're, you're okay, right? You put an expectation in there, right? You expect something from somebody, so you're going to want it to be an okay thing, right? And then all of a sudden, that person doesn't do what you expect, and then you're going to wind up down here. You're going to be upset, right? Because here's your expectation, it's all the way up here, and here's where you, you should normally be. You should be just baseline. This is without any expectations, but like your feelings are valid no matter what. So say you expect something from somebody, right, and that person doesn't meet that expectation, you're going to be feeling sad, right? Your expectation is going to be down here, you're going to be sad, or you're going to be upset, or something like that. You don't want to expect anything from anybody because they don't have the same experiences that you do, so they're never going to meet your expectation that you're thinking that they're going to. They're not, okay? Don't expect anything from anybody. So she was expecting a reward because the wolf promised a reward, but then she didn't get it. Now, Mama and Papa are working on things, right? Papa keeps promising Mama things, and I keep not getting them, but Mama just keeps being patient because I realize I can't, that's why I've always stayed pretty baseline with your father because I can't expect anything from him. Even if he hurts me, I can't expect him to apologize. I can't expect him to care. I can't. Nobody can. All right, so let's move on to the fox. The fox and the grapes. The only thing you have to worry about, baby, is that mama and papa both love you. All right? So this is Master Fox was just about famished and thirsty, too. When he stole into the vi the vinery where the sun-ripened grapes were hanging, up on the trails 
in a tempting show, but too high for him to reach. He took a run and he jumped and he snapped at the nearest bunch, but he missed. Again and again he jumped only to miss the illusion, the luminous prize. At last, worn out with just his efforts, he retreated, muttering, Well, I never really wanted those grapes anyway. I am sure they are sour and perhaps wormy and in the bargain. Application? Any fool can despair what he cannot have. Anyone can say, I don't want that anyway, right? He gave up. He walked away. All right, the next one is the hen and the fox. The a fox was out looking for a late supper. He came to a hen house and thought the open door he could see a hen far up on the highest perch, safe out of his reach. Here, thought the fox, was a case for diplomacy either that or go hungry so he gave considerable thought to just how he could approach his intended supper hello there friend hen said he in an anxious voice i haven't seen you about of late somebody told me that you have had a sick spell and was sincerely worried over you you look pale as a ghost if you will just step down i'll take your pulse and look at your tongue i'm afraid you are in quite a sage you never said a truer word cousin fox replied the hen it will have to be a sage for i am in such a state that if i were to climb down to where you are I'm afraid I wouldn't, it would be the death of me. Application. Be aware of the insincere friend. When someone's not being true to you, baby, so insincere. Someone's not being honest or true with you, right? The hare and the tortoise. A hare was consistently poking fun at the tortoise because of the slowness of his pace. The tortoise tried not to be annoyed by the jars of the hen, but one day in the patience in the presence of the other animals he was greeted into challenging the hare to a foot race. Why this is a joke, said the hare. You know that I can run circles around you. Enough of your boasting said the tortoise let's go on with the race so the course was set by the animals and the fox was chosen as judge he gave a sharp bark and the race was on almost before you could say scat the hare was out of sight the tortoise plugged along at his usual on hurried pace after a time the hare stopped to wait for the tortoise to come along. He waited for a long time until he began to get sleepy. I'll just take a quick nap here in the soft grass and then in the cool of the day I'll finish the race. So he lay down and he closed his eyes. Meanwhile the tortoise plugged on. He passed the sleeping hare and was pronounced the finish line. Oh, and was approaching the finish line when the hare awoke with a start. It was too late to save the race. Much ashamed, he crept away while all the animals at the finish line acclaimed the winner. Application. Slow and steady wins the race. Maybe Mama's not winning a race anytime soon or fast, but... Slow and steady will win the race. All right, baby. I'm going to say goodnight to you because I love you. And we're going to sing a song. And tomorrow's going to be the dog and the shadow. All right. Let's sing Lila Tope.
I don't know why I closed it because Mama's going to put the names in soon. All right, baby. Live a toe and good night to you. Live a toe, may your dreams come true. We sing live a toe, may Israel protect you throughout the night. Until we reach the morning light. Karina, baby, mama loves you. Mama will always love you, no matter what. And just like the tortoise, maybe I'm not winning anything fast, but we'll be back together soon. I have faith. God is going to, it says in the Bible, everything that's hidden in darkness must come to light. Right? Everything that's hidden in darkness has to come to light, no matter what. So I'm going to believe in the Torah, and I'm going to believe in the Bible, and I'm going to believe that God's going to reunite everything and everything's going to be fine. Because it's not my place to judge your papa. I love your papa. I'll always love your papa. You know, we've been together a lifetime. This doesn't make any sense to me. But I do know that your papa and your mama, your papa and I both love you. Alright? Papa always used to say that mama's his son, papa's my moon, and you are quite literally our rainbow baby. That's why we always called you our rainbow baby. Mama and papa love you, honey. We love you so very much. We'll always love you. Good night, my angel.